Hello and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review for Bread and Circuses, which is episode 14 of season 2 of Star Trek The Original Series. This video is a part of a series of videos where I review episodes of uh, Star Trek The Original Series, one uh, episode at a time. In this video I will cover the episode Bread and Circuses. So Bread and Circuses is the episode where Kirk and crew uh, go to a planet looking for a lost uh, Federation ship and they find a planet that is just like Rome. Uh, you know, the Roman Empire, but taking place in the 20th centuries with gladiators and whatnot. And eventually, through their discoveries, they discover that the captain they are searching for has become the uh, a Roman figurehead and has sold out his crew, who all, most of them, died in the arena by gladiators. And they then hold Kirk and Spock and McCoy captive and threaten to force them to bring the crew down so the same thing could happen to them. However, the captain, uh, wayward captain, finally helps Kirk escape at the cost of his life, and Kirk and his crew are able to beam back to the ship to safety. Um, so, a little bit of trivia about my personal experience with this episode, something I've been doing as I've been going by and covering uh, the original series, is that um, this episode is... The first episode of Star Trek I've ever saw. Um, it's I would say it's the only it's the first one I watched the entire thing of, but that's not entirely true because I actually missed the last like five ten minutes of it because I was just. I don't know, it's something I used to do in the 80s when I was a kid. Uh, I would find these random VHS tapes that we used to tape stuff off the TV and then just watch random stuff and like fast forward um, and watch random stuff. And at the end of the tape was this episode. And I actually, you know, at this point in my life, I thought I hated Star Trek. I would always talk about, oh, I hate Star Trek. It sucks. And this was like when I was like 9, 10 years old. And, um,. But I was like, oh, I was bored, and I just started watching the episode, and I was into it. Like, I really liked it. I was like, huh, this is very interesting. And I was actually really disappointed when the, the tape ended and cut off the last uh, ten minutes of the episode. I was really disappointed. I wanted to see how it ended. Uh, unfortunately, this is well before the days I could just look up it up on the streaming service and watch the rest of it. I had to wait like a decade <laughs> before, not a decade, maybe like five, six years before I actually got to see the ending of it. But it's an, and it's interesting because, and I didn't get into Star Trek from that episode though. I, I, that was kind of a lone thing, a lone anomaly. It wasn't until I watched Star Trek Two, as I talked about when I was eleven years old, that I actually became a huge Star Trek fan. But I saw this episode first, so this remains sort of the first episode I saw. Uh, but. You know, I was like 9 or 10 years old, so I think that's why explains why I like this. <laughs> because in um, later years, even when I was an older teenager, I did not like this episode. Because I was a bit older and old enough to understand Star Trek and uh, old enough to understand how ridiculous it is to have a Starfleet ship traveling through space vast you know, this very vast galaxy, the distances cannot be understated, like how far things are. And they travel at these incredible speeds to go to this far off distant planet. And they go there and find Romans acting exactly like the Roman Empire, but taking place in the 20th century. And they're speaking English. <laughs> Sorry, giving praise to, to the cat god here. Hey, stop dodging. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, and the fact that they're speaking English, they even call out, this is in fact is the only episode that specifically calls out the fact that they're speaking English, and I think this is before the Universal Translator was mentioned, if I do believe, um, and they never try to explain, like, other episodes, like a piece of the action, and... Patterns of Force, which I'll get to 
eventually in season two. Kind of hate season two. Uh, um, they at least try to explain why this alien culture is acting like uh, you know an old Earth culture, but here they they, they don't even try to explain. So th this gets back to what I talked about in the episode Miri about how they had this theory that has like no credibility whatsoever that there's this parallel earth that there just happen to be planets out in this vast galaxy that are exactly like earth and the uh producers latched on to it because it allowed them to uh do um episodes that are cheaper <laughs> and more relatable and i also talked about how in future track iterations they are able to get around this by actually doing the holodeck. They create the holodeck so they could just go in the holodeck and recreate these uh, different older versions of Earth and to visit them rather than just planets just so happen to be exactly like Earth, which is ridiculous, utterly ridiculous. And when I was watching this, this episode in particular, actually, I feel like would have made a better parallel universe episode rather than them just finding a planet out in the galaxy that just so happen to have romans in the 20th century that seems like a more of an interesting parallel universe kind of thing kind of like what enterprise did in season four when they had um what if the the nazis uh it was more of an alternate timeline than parallel universe but you know same difference <laughs> where people were messing with the timelines and we had this timeline where the nazis invaded the united states during World War Two, well, this would be what if, you know, the Roman Empire was still around in the 20th century. So if they found some way like to make it like a parallel universe or altered timeline kind of story, then it might have actually have been excusable. But for them to say, oh, we're traveling to this far off different alien world and it just so happens to be Roman there is utter bullshit. And I absolutely positively cannot get beyond this premise, the premise itself is so ridiculous that it absolutely tanks the episode. It's it's just dumb. Now, if I do, though, does it do a hypothetical exercise where I do look beyond the premise, which really I can, but let's just for argument's sake, for a hypothetical exercise, say that I do look beyond the premise and I go with the, go with it, uh, this episode is still not very good. Um, it doesn't really uh, offer anything um, special. It's just Kirk and Spock go down into the planet and, and they get captured and they're trying to argue with this old Starfleet officer. This is a plot, again, that they seem to recycle a lot, this wayward starship captain. Um, I know they do it again in the Mega Glory, which is another terrible episode. Which is again like why season two is not good. Like I don't know who in the right mind would say season two is the best uh, season of the original series. I honestly think it's the worst. I do think I'm gonna enjoy season three more than season two. Uh, season three with all of this flaws still has some really dark, interesting episodes. Where season two, it has a lot of episodes where they just go to freaking earth to like different parts of history we get nazi earth we get gangster chicago gangster earth and we get fucking romans in the 20th century earth it's stupid i don't like it but anyway uh even uh sorry even if i look beyond the premise of this episode it's yeah kirk and spock and mccoy get captured uh they have to fight an arena and then they escape it's no big whoop, and the whole plot with the wayward captain thing is, I do yeah, like I don't buy that he would sell his crew out to to the Romans. Like they didn't really explain it. He just seemed like an evil captain, and he decided to change his mind and help Kirk at the last minute for no good reason. Like they didn't sell his character in any way, shape, or form. Now, and another thing I noticed, like I just noticed on this rewatch, is like. There was a scene where I didn't like the interplay between Spock and McCoy in this. They were like nagging at each other and being extremely annoying, and I just hated it. Like more so than usual. I uh, like a lot. Sometimes I like their interactions, and all the times it can be a bit grating, but not too bad. But this time was particularly annoying. And uh, they had this scene with Spock and McCoy in the cell 
after they were forced to fight in the arena. And it was kind of supposed to be like a, you know, a, a good touching scene where they're actually, the two of them are actually like in their own way, like showing their appreciation for each other, which, you know, I kind of maybe did appreciate a little bit, but here's the thing. What I noticed that scene, I looked at the runtime of the episode, there was five minutes left in the episode and this there was a scene where they seemed like they were really really far away from the ending and i was like how is there only five minutes left in the episode and then i realized that the the episode ends like that like the, it gets resolved very quickly very easily they don't like that uh, other guy who was helping them who was like a pacifist now who was helping them he just died just kill him off. Who gives a fuck about him? He only like r sacrificed his own whole life just so you could find your stupid friends. <laughs> and ended up Kirk and party get ended up getting him killed, not giving a shit about it. And um, yeah, and it was just as simple as the captain guy just tossed Kirk his um, communicator for no reason. Like, they did not earn this in any way, shape, or form. It was just like, you know, the evil Roman guy saying, oh, you're corrupt. It didn't have him, like, tearing into him saying, you wouldn't understand this because you're not a man. Oh, and the other thing that was, like, ten minutes before the end of the episode was this hot chick hitting on Kirk, being like, I've been ordered to be your slave. And this is a... There was no reason to have those scenes whatsoever. They just had to have their obligatory all... Hot women hitting on Kirk Hart out has to have it in every single fucking episode just for the fuck of it. They need to make their quota of showing how irresistible Kirk is. And this scene served no purpose whatsoever. And they were doing this bullshit when there was 10 minutes left in the episode. And then all of a sudden, there was just the episode just ends. Like all of a sudden, it just, oh, here's a communicator, beam you up, we're gone. And everything's back to normal. It's bad pacing. It was a bad this episode's bad in every way shape and form um the other thing i was going to mention is they mentioned the prime directive a lot in this episode like they could easily like um send down like people in phasers or they could easily just like beam them up or use the you know technology of the ship to easily defeat the romans but they don't do it because they would be violating the prime directive and that if they revealed themselves uh to this culture that is pre-warp and the guy who uh, the roman you know emperor guy is aware of this and he uses this to taunt kirk um about it and scotty comes up with this clever way of like turning the lights off at the at a key moment thus not violating the prime directive but having a sneaky way to help kirk get out of his uh, current situation yet and a couple episodes earlier in friday's child they seem to have zero fucking compunction of violating the prime directive like they were perfectly fine to beam down and reveal themselves to an, uh, a civilization that was less advanced than even this one that was even less advanced in 20th century let alone pre-warp and just, like, reveal themselves as aliens, show them their phasers and technology, and try to make an alliance with them. And so the, the Starfleet had no problem with doing that whatsoever, but now they can't simply, you know, phaser a few people to save their crew because that would violate the Prime Directive. You know, if you go by... If you look forward to what Star Trek would become. This this episode's more in line with the Prime Directive than Friday's Child, and so maybe you could say it's just a fault of Friday's Child, but I think it's more of a contrived excuse to have this episode, and that's why they made this up. There's no consistency. What's its consistency? I mean, this episode was only, what, less than 10 episodes ago? It's not that long ago. It's in the same season. This just a, a tad bit of consistency is that too much to ask for even in the original series? I don't know. And and uh, yeah, so it, it did make me feel like this. And plus, they did violate the Prime Directive some more in the Private Little War, by the way. But those episodes are trying to be uh, analogous to the Vietnam War, and you can't do that with a you know 
but whatever. But here they just have the, oh, we can't interfere. And the, yeah, the whole thing with, and I was reading our reviews on this, and apparently something that people praised a lot about this episode was the commentary on television and the sort of downside, the, the ratings boost side of it. But I found it kind of just typical, just cliche of the type of commentary. I didn't particularly like the whole thing, how they were like when Spock and McCoy were fighting gladiators, like the boos and cheers were fake. It was just some guy turning a knob. Like, I don't know, but I just thought that was dumb. And this is the whole announcer going, you decide who wins and whatever. But of course, this you know, is probably what television was like in the 60s. I just felt disconnected to it. And the whole, again, the premise is flawed. The 20th century room that just happens to be out on a random planet. If they made this an alternate timeline, maybe I could have enjoyed this episode more. But I, the premise ruins the entire thing. It really does. Now, one last thing I want to talk about with this goddamn episode is the whole son of God thing. So we meet these um, religious people who found religion. They're pacifists, and they talk about they how they worship the sun, and they keep saying that they worship the sun. And then Spock and, and McCoy refer to sun worshippers as primitive and um, they're like, oh, there's no sun worshippers in, in Roman times. And that's a very primitive thing to worship the sun. At the end of the episode, Ahura is like, oh, no, they're not talking about the sun in the sky. They're talking about the son of God. And like, oh, oh, they're not primitive. That makes so much more sense. Christianity. What an interesting concept to have the birth of Christianity. Still going in the 20th century. God is so advanced Christians rather than those stupid primitive morons sun worshippers and of course um as an atheist i reject that premise i think sun worshiping is just as primitive and ridiculous as uh worshiping um you know <laughs> as, as, as a zombie or whatever who <laughs> rose from the dead um so i think i don't know I think Christianity is just... But I'm reminded specifically of the stand-up comedian bit from one of my favorite, all-time favorite, my all-time favorite, not one, but the best stand-up comedian, in my opinion, that ever existed, George Carlin. Uh, George Carlin actually had this bit. He was a huge atheist, obviously, and didn't believe in God or Christian, Christianity or any of that nonsense. And he was making a really good argument that if you were going to, if he was like, if I was going to worship something, I'd worship the sun because I can see it. There it is. I don't have to like go on faith that it exists. I know it exists because it's right fucking there and it brings me light it brings it you know creates life throughout the planet so i'm going to worship the sun so he actually made a great argument how sun worshiping is actually way more reasonable and way more advanced than worshiping uh the son of god <laughs> so that ending on a philosophical level pisses me the fuck off but anyway this was to a mostly Christian audience that they were playing to at the time, too. So, yeah. The, oh, not those primitive morons who worship the sun. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Like, when do you get off on your high fucking horse, Spock? Like, Jesus Christ, you're not logical. But anyway... <laughs> anyway... <clears throat> now, uh, let me thank uh, all those Patreon supporters that support me on Patreon. Of course, they're supporters very much appreciated as i always like to say the lifeblood of my channel there is Kyrie 91 anthony d benedictus ricky many jester uh joe lavals brian a uh alessandro michelisio norman buckwald stephen kennedy brenton berg allison fordyce um and brandon neil howes thank you so very much um, for your support, uh, it is very much appreciated. 
Uh, so we do have a couple of patron comments. Uh, those support me on Patreon can comment on the episode, and I shall read your comments here. Uh, let me, as soon as I find them, give me a second. Okay, so first comment is from Ricky that says, This episode is what I think of when I watch Season 2. It's where the crew beams down to a planet, and they are captured, and they have to do some battle or challenges and find a way to escape although to be fair this isn't as bad as something like say patterns of force the stupid nazi episode but really there's nothing here and it's really boring and uninteresting and the final scene in which a horror was talking about that these people worshiping the sun could have been actually could have been actually be as in worship of the son of god uh, jesus was cheesy and stupid so my rating is a three out of ten uh as i say yep absolutely agree that yeah season two i don't know i really think season two is, is the worst season of the original series honestly but okay anyway we'll move on to uh next comment from brandon neil howells Bread and circuses. So our gallant crew is searching for a lost freighter and end up on yet another Earth-like planet. This one where ancient Rome is still in progress. And this never happens again. Everyone speaks 20th century English. Fun fact, the shrubbery hiding the cave where the children of the sun gather is the entrance to the Bat Cave in the 60s TV series Batman. It's hard not to be cynical about this one because I've seen so many sword and sandal movies. It is Claudius Marcus who kills the barbarian William B. Harrison, the same Claudius Marcus who is pro counsel? I'm confused. Maricus is a total wimp. Wow. Uh, I do like Flavius Maximus because my uh, first instinct is to always fight. And Kirk gets a slave girl for the night because the proconsul deems him a man. McCoy <laughs> insults Spock again, and after fighting in the arena, uh, Kirk, Spock, and McCoy are beamed out of the prison cell unharmed uh, amidst a hail of bullets. The sun in Children of the Sun is homophone. Uh, the slaves in the cave are actually the followers of Jesus. I cannot decide whether this is very clever or very corny. I think it can be both. Uh, McCoy says there were no sun worshippers in ancient Rome. Horseshit! Sol Invictus, sun unconquered, was a deity worshipped during that period. Five code greens out of ten. <laughs> yeah, I, that doesn't surprise me that they got that wrong that there were no sun worship. The whole sun worship thing is not clever in my opinion. It's just dumb. It's just insulting. It's stupid. It's pandering to a mostly Christian audience. But anyway. Uh, um, Code Green. Yeah, that's the interesting thing because Kirk is like, when he talks to Scotty, but the guy is holding a gun to his head, he's like, Code Green, Scotty, everything is well, all good. But Code Green actually means they're in huge trouble, but he's not allowed to do anything. Really? That's that's what you called Code Green? I know, way it's kind of clever because any outside person would think Code Green would mean everything's okay. Green usually means go or fine, everything's good. Uh, so maybe that would be a clever sort of underhanded way to mean actually it means we're fucked but we don't want you to do anything because we don't want other people to know that we're fucked uh, but anyway um yeah i don't know was an interesting thing to think about so my rating for uh bread and circuses out of 10 is going to be a three uh very poor um I don't know. I almost gave it a four, but I do. Th it, this episode annoys me too much. The whole, as I said, the whole premise brings it down. I I wouldn't give it a two because I don't think it's like the worst thing ever. Like it, it's not like an absolute terrible episode. It's not like inf offensively bad, but it's just the premise is so bad. The premise is so dumb, 
And, yeah, some of the things they do in it with, like, the Sun Worshipper things obviously piss me off. But other than that, it's just your terror, stereotypical episode where the way team beams down, they get captured, and they escape. There's really not much to it other than the novelty is, oh, look, 20th century Rome. Now, as I said, if this was an alternate timeline or parallel universe, maybe I'd be okay with that. But as just happens to be some other planet that happens to be out there is total horseshit and I'm not okay with that at all so, and they're just speaking English just humans on the planet on the other side of the galaxy speaking English and have the Roman Empire it's dumb it's dumb anyway god I don't like season 2 so <laughs> that is it for my review of uh, Bread and Circuses um, so, um, just give me a second as I, um, delay <laughs> to bring up my schedule, which I never, never, ever learn to bring it up in advance. I always have to do it to the last second when I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Okay. So, let's see. Here we are. So, next Monday will be Journey to Babel. Uh, my review of that going live on my channel. Thursday, I'll be back for another review of Picard Season 3. And then Saturday, I uh, shall return uh, for another uh, new uh, TOS review for a private little war. Oh, boy. <laughs> another episode I talked about referenced here. Uh, so that's what's coming up on Enchantment of Eternity. You can check out my channel as I do many more Star Trek videos and many more videos on uh, many other shows um, and so be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all of that and thanks a lot for watching. Mm -hmm.